Hey YouTube, today's video is going to be me installing a mini split air conditioning system for Simply Sally's shop. Um, we got this laser and we've not got it set up yet because I don't know if you can see, but it's really snowy and windy outside. It's like 30 degrees today with 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, I was going to do this like a week ago, but we all got a stomach bug. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I've lost some weight. I've lost like 10 pounds in less than a week. Um, Getting a stomach virus is the best way to lose weight if you want to get on a quick diet. Kidding. Don't ever do that. It's a bad idea and it's miserable. But anyways, I'm going to be putting this uh, mini split unit in. We've kind of already figured out where we want it. I'm not sure if you can see there's a line right there. We know that's the center of the room. Um, I moved that shelf right there over a little bit. Uh, we're probably going to keep it right there because it's got the air hose on it. And the, it'll be nice little storage. Anyways, it's not what this video is about. So... I'm gonna mount the indoor unit right there. Um, it's like the circulation fan and it's got a filter on it and all this stuff. We're gonna mount that unit in here and then we're gonna drill a hole through the wall and we're gonna run our coolant lines out, our thermostat wires, power wires, um, drain line, all that stuff outside. And then we're gonna hook the outside unit up. Um, I have a concrete pad that I did a video on maybe two weeks ago or so um, that I was gonna use for the mini split. Um, I've got to mount the mini split to that. I have wedge anchors. Um, they're called wedge concrete anchors. You drill a hole and beat them down in there with a hammer and when you tighten it down the wedge expands and holds. Anyways, I'm doing that so the thing that move around is so some thief can't get it if he decides to try to. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoy today's video. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially in this cold wind. got the plate mounted um you probably wondered why i took it back down and then put it back up again um i added two screws just because it was kind of like you can kind of you hear that vibrating that means the plate's not flush against the wall and it was kind of sketchy going on up here and i could kind of pull that off the wall a little bit i just wanted to kind of sturdy it up um you can kind of see it flexing right there it's not that big of a deal i'm just really weird about stuff you can see it's level and everything um, I'm thinking the next step, I have read on, I've read ahead in directions, but I can't remember, but I'm thinking the next step is to drill the drain hole, and I'm going to probably put it somewhere right in here. Um, you don't want the, well, when I say drain hole, I mean the entire hole that holds everything, wires and everything. And the reason I'm referring it to is a drain hole because my drain, wire, drain hose is going through it, and you don't want it level like that. You want it kind of downward slope, obviously, so when you're, water or condensation is draining it's going to go down and out instead of just sitting like that which would be very bad um so i'm just going to kind of drill it at an angle so when my condensation goes through it's going to go down and out and outside There's our nice, pretty, circular, downward sloped hole. Let's go on the outside and make sure I didn't blow the side now. Look how perfect that is. I couldn't have got more lucky if I wanted to. It got underneath the side and where I wanted it and everything. Okay, so the next step is going to be pushing the coolant lines and the drain line and the wire through the hole that we just drilled. Um, I kind of started that because I didn't know if I was going to push it through or not. All I literally did was unroll it and push it through so you didn't miss anything. Um, but the, 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 the problem I'm, I'm having is you got to connect that to this wall unit and that stuff is copper tubing. So I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to go about connecting that um, at the same time as sticking it through the wall like that. Um, 
I'm going to push it through as far as I think I need to, and then sort of, because you see you got to bend it as you go, and you can't kink it because that would limit, that would limit your um, coolant. Let's leave that right there. I'm going to go check and make sure I'm not digging stuff up the ground right quick. Alright, so I was inches, inches away from the ground. Perfect. So I'm going to run, run my drain line through right quick. Get in about the same spot. Close enough. And then my wire. Um, it's got ferrules on one end and it's got ring terminals. Not ring terminals, but uh, fork terminals on the other. Um, I'm going to have to take apart, the, take the panels off of this wall unit to see if it wants ferrules or ring terminals or fork terminals and then I'll run whichever end needs to go outside right quick. So it looks like the outdoor unit is the one that wants to take the um, fork terminal or yeah the fork terminals and all. So I'll run those outside right quick. Next step is going to be connecting those coolant lines right there. I'm going to connect those here and here. Guys, I couldn't record really, I couldn't really get a good angle anywhere I was to be able to see this. But these are the two coolant lines. Um, I was able to get those connected and I was wanting to say I use this too. It's like a gasket that's, that's safe to use for ventilation systems I guess. I've never used it before, but I uh, read Amazon reviews, and this is the highest rated stuff, so that's what I got. Um, I also connected my drain line, and next step is to connect the wire. See, I've got my coolant lines and drain line connected here. I also cut this little knockout right here. There was one on this side. You can see that. Uh, but since I'm mounting it the way I'm mounting it, um, I cut this one out. It was supposed to be a pop out and I popped it out and not all of it came out so I had to use a knife and kind of straighten it up and I think because it's so cold outside everything's freaking brittle and falling apart. Um, the wire came with actually like a conduit and just unrolling it, it was snapping apart breaking so I ended up throwing it away and I'll buy something higher quality. If it was good quality it wouldn't have done that but I only paid, mm, I think I paid like I think I paid like 480 something dollars for this thing and it's a one ton unit big enough to do a um, 24 by 24 garage it's actually you have to look it up I don't want to start telling you numbers and you'd be like oh that's not true because I don't exactly know I just know one ton was big enough for this garage and it, it came this thing came with like a seven year for seven year warranty it's a Cooper and Hunter I got it off of Amazon you can just look up Cooper and Hunter mini split and uh, it, it got really good reviews. It's made by a company that's uh, pretty reputable. Um, so for the price and everything, I'm not complaining about a cheap piece of wire as long as everything else works. Well, as you can see, I couldn't really record me wiring that up. I, I wired the red, the black, the white, and the green wire there. Um, I, there's no space. Um, this was like the last step. Or, you know, I'm doing everything sequentially, right? So I'm, I, it told me to do something first, I did it, and second I did it, and the third I did it, and fourth. It said to do this after that, to wire it up after I did all that other stuff, but it really should have told me to wire it up first because, as I was mentioning earlier, these wires are obviously stiff as copper. Well, I got this thing sitting on top of something, and unless I just are not thinking right today, which is very possible because I'm tired where I've been sick and all this stuff, um, I, I had to like pop the cover off. It was a pain in the butt to get the cover flipped off and 
Yeah, I had to contort myself around this to get, I don't know, I'm just complaining, I guess, because I don't feel good. But anyways, um, I really wish they had told me to just wire it up first because I could have turned this thing around, wired it up, turned it back around, hooked that up, and been done. And not had to do a bunch of stupid stuff. But I got it wired up. I'm not sure what the next step is. I would imagine to put the covers on and hang this, straighten all that up and go outside. But let's see what else the instructions tell me to do. <laughs> I mean, I guess this one tells you to be... Uh, have a licensed professional because they don't look at the instructions they already know what to do i've never hung one of these so let's see what's next there it is okay so i didn't record that because i had a few fits of rage and by a few i mean the entire time i was doing this um it was very difficult to bend the copper lines and wires and drain and all that stuff it was mainly the copper lines and uh, I don't feel like they left enough room. There's a clip right there and a clip right there. And I do not feel like they left enough room. Um, because see, those coolant lines go from right there all the way across and then out the wall. And you can, in the instructions, it says you can ride it that way. You can go straight out. You can go that way. You can go straight out. Anyway, straight out would have been the way to go. But I don't really, I don't know. Without doing it again, I don't really know how much easier that would have been. That was an absolute disaster because I had to climb up on the ladder and hold this heavy thing and try to bend the copper tubing and hold everything together. And you're supposed to keep the drain line on the bottom, which makes sense, you know, because it's a drain line. And I don't know, I ended up having to get Simply Sally out here to help hold it and guide it. And we were both like, we were both mad. <laughs> so I didn't record that because we probably look like two fools. Like I said, never done this before. So, um, if, if you knew, if you know what you're doing, please don't say, "Oh, you idiot! You could have done it this way." Because I'll probably never do this again. Um, but it's up now. Let's go outside and clean the ice off the pad and mount that unit right there. So I have my unit sitting on my concrete pad here. I'm trying not to get mud all over my shoes when I'm standing on the pad. But um, I kind of already got my, I got a masonry bit and I have the wedge anchors right there. And what I'm going to, and sorry if it's windy by the way, it's like 30 and 40 miles on Wednesday, it's ridiculous. But I've got my holes started because I had this thing centered or, or where I want it. Okay. And I have another hole right there started and I have another hole right there started. Um, and what I'm going to do is just slide this thing out of the way, drill the holes, clean it best I can because it's soaking wet. But uh. And I'll knock the wedge anchors in, set the unit on top of it, and tie it down. And then we'll be able to wire it up and all that fun stuff. So it's wired up. Um, I hope you can see. It's kind of getting dark on me. The first three wires are for the inside unit, and the last two wires, the black and white, are my main power coming in. Um, here's the wires to the unit. It's a big jumble of mess right now. And there's my wire, my main power wire that we ran a long time ago. Um, I made a video on that, so I said we ran it a long time ago. Um, if you haven't seen it tomorrow all we have to do now is get these two lines right here take this panel off connect these two lines down here 
and we'll hook a vacuum up to it, hold the vacuum for a while. And then the, this unit has the refrigerant inside of it. So once we uh, hold our vacuum and verify that there are no leaks, we'll uh, open the refrigerant, let the refrigerant in the lines, and we'll check everything. So we shouldn't have too much left to do. This hasn't been too bad. It's been pretty straightforward and easy for the most part, other than the inside thing. The inside unit, uh, like I said before, I needed help with that, holding it up. And these lines are stiff. Everything's stiff because it's so cold out. Um, but overall, everything's going pretty good. I'm, I've decided I'm just going to leave this like this. I don't feel like cutting it. I have a flaring kit and all that, but I don't feel like cutting it and potentially messing something up and all this stuff. I'm just going to leave it. And I'll make it look nice, though. I'll coil it up and make it look really nice. So not worried about it being ugly back here anyway. But that's all for today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Good morning, guys. So I just got started. Um, all I did was take those two, see the little two pieces of plastic? Those were the caps that were on the hose. And those two pieces of brass were the caps that were right here. Um, all I did was take that off and I connected these. And don't forget to use your nylog. I put nylog on the threads and I tightened it down. You're supposed to torque it, but I don't have a torque wrench or stuff like that. So I just got it. I don't know you don't want to get it so tight you break the copper that's that would be horrible because then you'd have to um, cut that and then uh, flare it and all that and I have flaring tools and stuff but I don't care anything about cutting that off and messing with it right now I just wanted to <laughs> leave what was factory and tighten it down the way it was um, but anyways I added my nylog and tightened it down next step is to connect our vacuum pump to the service port right here so I'm about to vacuum the um, all the lines out I have my low pressure side of the manifold gauge connected to the service port low pressure side. Okay, and then I have the manifold gauge in the center of the yellow line right there connected to the vacuum pump. And then I'm reading the instructions for the actual unit. It's just telling me to run it for 15 minutes, which is kind of like a standard practice. Um, you run it for 15 minutes with this valve open, of course, because what you're doing, you're pulling a vacuum on these coolant line, refrigerant lines and what that's doing it almost fell in the ice but what that's doing is uh just making sure you got all the contaminants and all the air and moisture and all that type of stuff out of the lines before you add the refrigerant which is in this unit it's inside of the unit and the valve's closed and it won't come out until you open the valve so um but once you pull a vacuum on it you want to close that valve and watch it for maybe 10 15 20 minutes whatever just to make sure that that gauge right there has not moved and what that's going to show you is that there's no leak um if it does move there's a leak and you got a problem between those two lines that you connected or those two lines that you connected um usually that's where it is because that's where you were <laughs> you know so anyways let's pull a vacuum on it and we'll wait and make sure there's no leaks all right guys so i've ran it for about 15 minutes um right there is where you want the pressure to be around the negative 30 on this gauge i can't remember i think it is the uh the instruct this machine comes from china so the instructions are like seven negative 76 centimeter hp or something like that which is negative 30 inch hp i googled it um but now that it's been running for 20 minutes we just want to turn this valve off and turn the pump off or close this valve and then turn the pump off and then we'll watch that and make sure it stays on negative 30. um i'll probably watch it for 15 20 minutes it only says five but 20 minutes is better than five minutes um so i'm gonna do that cool see that guys it's been 20 minutes and apparently there's no leak because that gauge has not moved at all um the next step is to well the instructions are telling me this but on, on the high side which is if you're doing this you're probably not watching this video as a how-to but you see the big line and the little line the little line is the high pressure side and you see that oh gosh you can't see it maybe you can see that all you do stick this in there and crack it a quarter of a turn for a couple seconds you'll hear some of the gas release when you do that this gauge over here will rise because you just released refrigerant into the lines right um and you only crack it for a couple seconds and then you close it back and then you watch for leaks again this gauge will rise and um you watch it maybe 15 20 minutes and if the gauge doesn't go down that means you don't have a leak then you can go ahead and disconnect this from the service port put the cap on 
open this valve and open this valve all the way then it's ready to be tested hopefully it works after all this work all right so i opened the high pressure valve a quarter of a turn for about five seconds and that got us up to about 32 and a half inches of mercury um i'll probably set another 15 20 minutes just to make a million percent sure there are no leaks i don't think there are at this point but uh, i'll come back in 15 20 minutes again and check make sure we're still at about uh 32 and a half 33 something like that and if we are we're pretty much done and ready to test then like i said before we'll just open those valves up take this uh pump off and test it out so it's been 15 20 minutes and we're still at around the 32 and a half 33 mark so it's time to disconnect this serve this line and put the caps on and we'll go ahead and open up the um both the high pressure and low pressure valve then we'll turn the power on and test it well guys everything's working like it's supposed to um i checked the inside i checked the temperature and it's putting out a lot of good heat and i checked the air conditioner too because that was part of you know the process of testing you gotta just test the air conditioner and the heat but this thing is so quiet i couldn't even hear it running outside so i had to come out here and check it it's pretty cool um the next step is now that i know everything's running good i'm gonna check and make sure there are no leaks on those two lines right there and then i'm gonna make sure there's no leaks on the inside coolant lines and then i'll wrap these lines right here with insulation and tape I figure I'd show you what it looks like on the inside. It's This is running too right now and you can barely hear it. Uh, and there's a little piece of water right there. I just didn't clean it off. I did that because there was a drain test or you had to test the drain and you had to actually get a, I just got a bottle of water and pour it on the top of the unit. And what that's for is to make sure everything's draining right before you hang that thing up on the wall. And cause that'd be a disaster having to take all that back down because you didn't route a drain line right. But anyways, it's, it's running right now, and uh, I checked it, and it's putting out a little over 100 degrees, so that's really good heat. I mean, it's this thing is putting out it's heat, man. I know that's crazy. I'm excited about it, but it's putting out really good heat. Um, now to go outside, and uh, oh yeah, by the way, I checked for, for leaks too, by the way. Um, what I did, I just used soapy water. I got um, Dawn Dish Detergent in a bottle that, that I use for like tires and stuff and checking leaks, and I just sprayed that on all the connection points that i made and there were no leaks luckily <laughs> that would have been bad um but yeah no leaks now i'm ready to wrap um the lines and insulation and tape and should be finished with this project there it is all finished up um for the insulation i just wrapped pipe insulation around it i ended up doing um i think about 75 feet something like that i, I pretty much doubled it up i got one layer really tight and then i overlapped it again really tight so and then i went back over it with the it's not the it's not duct tape it's like permanent duct tape it's not regular duct tape is what i mean it is duct tape but it's permanent so and it's uv resistant and exterior grade and all that type of stuff so i went ahead and wrapped over the insulation with that to kind of get it an extra layer of protection from the sun and water and whatever um the only thing left i have to do is bury it but i can't bury it right now because the ground's kind of frozen um and we're supposed to get another round of it in two days i'm i'm sick of this weather i don't know what the heck has been going on the past couple months but i'm sick of it but next the outside unit's done lines have been insulated everything's been checked for leaks um that little wet spot you see underneath it was just that thread sealant that i put on it i caked thread sealant up and when i started running the unit the pipes got warm and that left the residue that squeezed out kind of liquefied and ran out so that's no big there's nothing there's no leaks i promise because i wouldn't be have done a taped all that stuff up but um and i went ahead and put silicone caulk around the pipe up there and i'm still going to come back tomorrow it's too cold today because uh, you have to do the great stuff a foam sealant and i think it's above 40 degrees and it is not 40 degrees today um tomorrow it's supposed to be like 50 so <laughs> it's crazy stuff but uh that little hole up there i'm gonna come back and put great stuff foam sealant in there to um kind of you know keep the cold air from coming in and warm air from coming in and bugs and water and all that so that's it guys hope you guys enjoyed it